So for gate two, right? I thought about it. Explaining from start to finish as if it was on item level run and adding in variables if the if there is like a mistake going on is probably the best way to do it. Generally, long story short, you have this thing called a shackle and this is the item at number two here. You can throw it. And what happens is if you throw the shackle, it's like Monster Hunter where you kind of land in the mine. And when this dial finishes, as you see here, when this dial finishes over here, it's going to fly up and it's going to trap one of his arms, right? And when he stomps it, he always makes that star effect. And then he's trying to take away the shackles off by having a stagger bar appearing. And if you stagger him, he's going to be staggered, which just causes you guys to do more DPS. There is a specific scripted pattern that the dragon does. So the raid itself became very, very easy. At the very start, what you guys need to do is you just bring a general battle item. You have the destruction, you have to bring a destruction bomb because there's a destruction mechanic. And then you should all have the shackles. Let's go from start to finish, okay? I think that's the easiest way to do it. At the very start, you always want to throw a shackle, right? And the shackle should be always in the front side of the dragon because the dragon, sometimes he will crawl in front of you like that. You see this, right? And also at the same time, don't throw it right away because the roar here, you see? The, the, the big red roar is when he transforms. So he does this multiple times. For example, when it just starts, he, ha he has no buffs, right? He has no buffs. He cries, and then he generates two buffs. It has up to five. Three is when he kind of does the crazy patterns. Two is when he's a little bit weaker. If you have five patterns, we called it the Exodia, you wipe uh, automatically. Because he kind of phases, he kind of goes somewhere else. He lands on the ground. And that happens if you let if you fight him for too long, enhances his bo body itself and then uh, causes the white mechanic. That's why it took so long for us to figure it out. You throw the shackle, the shackle lands, and then he's going to do a stagger mechanic. And he will also spawn blood based on how much HP he loses. So this is blood that he spawns over here. It's an X position or a plus position actually sometimes. If you eat a blood for 15 seconds, your cooldown is like 80% down. So you can spam skills. So you see me doing the, the awakening here and make sure you use your awakening when you have the blood buff on because it's only 30 seconds, you can spam it. The only downside when you have the blood on is if you get hit at least once, you're going to spew out a bunch of blood bubbles from you. Look at that. And you can pick these back up to heal yourself back up. But this is why shields are super important. After the stagger mechanic, you can stagger him up to two times. And if you have a princess gunless, you can stagger him three times. But, uh, but for that note aside, you stagger him two times. The next stagger mechanic happens every three normal patterns. So he got staggered, right? He's going to do three normal patterns while, got, while getting shackled. Shackled patterns and regular patterns are different. You got to keep that in mind, okay? And, oh, wait, one, two, and then this is the third one. Because I kind of skipped it. So this is the third one, right? So he's doing the shackle. Uh, he's kind of trying to break the shackle again. And then you do more DPS. Because the shackled one uh, is much easier to dodge everything. The general safe spot is where the sharpshooter and the summoner is right now. These are the busters. Uh, it's at shackled area because you can't he can't move so most of his attacks are going to be left side danger where i am here now this is the third stagger your third stagger is not supposed to succeed uh so when he's when he uh when you fail to stagger he rips the shackles off he will do a star pattern and then he will do a 180 breath attack like that breath attack and then afterwards, if you do this strategy, he will always do a counter, which is eight minutes and 30 seconds. This is guaranteed scripted. Right, did I hear? So if you wanna see the counter animation, what happens is he kinda winds up his tail like that. And then he's going to glow blue. 
So after the shackle myth, expect that the counter is going to happen. And when you guys are doing like a reclear party, after the counter, you stagger him. You have to throw another shackle. And the, the correct timing for this, as soon as the stagger is complete, you must throw it. If you don't, he's going to jump away. Uh, and the reason why you can't throw earlier is because when he explodes and you see this tornado here, the red cloud tornado, it disables your shackles. Therefore, you can't throw it beforehand. You always throw it right after the red cloud is, uh, this red cloud has disappeared. So this is very important, okay? So we got the second shackle, right? And then he's doing the stagger mech again. And then you, uh, you hit him again and you keep DPSing. So by the time you do it twice, he's going to do the first mechanic which is around 90, uh, 92 to 100 lines. This mechanic is the first mechanic. The NPC will say something about it. So one of us is going to be marked and it's always the closest person to the boss. So I'm going to be the first, we call it juicy, right? Remember you always call it juicy. He's, he's the attention guy, which is the two eyeball. And then the triple uh, clones will come out so if this is the boss, it spawns either here, like this, a triangle or the reverse triangle. Yes, this is actually better. It spawns here, right? Or here, like that. Make sure to look at the minimap, because the minimap will have a red dot. When the clone comes out, you always stay on the side of him. You, can, you, you cannot stay right in front of him, because the issue is he's going to either counter you or, or he's going to mark right in front of you. So this is another example of starting the mechanic. So he's at 92. He will jump too sometimes. So check this out. This is a jump variant. He will jump. And then he will start the mechanic. So what support needs to do is you need to space bar in and be the closest person. When you're DPS, you don't follow him and do DPS. When you guys know that he's doing a mechanic, go to your position, which is like 12 or five or seven, okay? It's usually 12, five, seven. The reason why I'm saying it's important for you to uh, stay on the side is because you get, you get another eyeball, which is the single eyeball. And this guy over here is going, is looking for me. That's why uh, there's this uh, cone shape here too. He's looking for you. If he looks at you, it's a raid wipe. And when he does a counter, you can walk in front of him and then do a counter because the counter is extremely slow. So if you are the mark, you have to circle around them. Make sure you ping as well. Or you just, uh, you, you say it in comms that, hey, it's 12, it's 12 o'clock. So he's, he's rotating and trying to find me. You see this, right? So he's rotating, rotating. You always stay behind them so that uh, he doesn't find you. It's kind of goofy, but see, you see how I'm uh, moved up a little bit. And then since I'm closer to his left side, he rotates left. That's how it usually works. So walking is enough. Don't try to do DPS. Walking is enough. And the other two party mates, his job is to DPS. Okay, so this is the counter example. It spawns. I'm on the side. Since I know that he's going to do the counter, I go right in front of him and counter. So the middle person, I'm aggro to the middle guy and he does a breath after he recognizes me. So you have to use this to your advantage. And you notice I'm standing here on purpose. He does a breath animation, and then I move to the side and then buff. What happens is if you guys just keep rotating and he does a breath on the right side, what happens is the breath, uh, um, was it? It kind of stuns the rotating target. So he gets animation locked. And then the right side, uh, add will recognize the stun player and then it will it will cause a wipe so it's really important for you to not just circle around randomly but make sure that he will acknowledge throw the breath and then try to acknowledge again so when the mechanic is completely over you get to do some dps you will keep doing dps because what he usually does is he cry uh and then um get ready for the next phase look at that so he transforms into three stacks over here What's important to keep in mind that he is he will always counter as well. Like he will always counter that 8.30 minute mark and he will always counter at 7 minute mark. And there's a way to figure out 
if he's doing a counter or not. When his patterns are done, he usually rotates like that. This is for a next pounder, uh, counter, right? The counter is the only pattern that he cries. This is how people can figure it out. This is a this is one way to figure it out. Watch. Look at this roar. You heard that roar? That's the only time he actually does a counter. He roars before it. So all you need to do is remember two things. After the mechanic, he will always do a counter. You got to keep that in mind. If he rotates to you, and if he roars, that's 100% counter. And if you land the counter, he will get he will get staggered again. So you got to make sure to get ready to stagger him, okay? And then he got staggered. And what do you do after stagger? Right after... The fog is gone, you throw the mine. You throw the shackle. Look how fast we threw it, right? This is going to be landed guaranteed. And then he's going to do stagger. And your goal is you need to do destruction on him. You need to do destructions on him. So he gets he, so he gets staggered. And then you can do destruction anytime. You can do it at the second stagger, you can do it at the third stagger, it doesn't matter. But make sure you know that he will do three patterns before you do the next stagger mechanic. And when you when he does a stagger mechanic, don't stagger him when the shackle's in place, because if you finish the stagger mechanic, the red explosion disables all the shackles that is on the field too. So that's the biggest mistakes that most people do, okay? You gotta watch out for those. So look at him here. So we threw the shackle, but we're not doing the stagger mechanic. We paused stagger. This, we can do it, but we paused it because we want the shackles to go up and land the second one, right? And then he will be destructioned. Uh, so this destruction is not that high. If you throw, uh, if you throw two destruction bots plus like a couple destruction skills, you'll be able to do it. And when you destroy, and, you, and you, when you do destruction, he will lose all of his buff. So there's three of them, right? He will lose all of his buffs. And then he'll be much weaker. And then you keep doing DPS. Your goal is to push him to 30 to 32 lines. Because he will phase automatically. And if you do destruction too early, the issue is here is he gets this precision. Like he gets like a precision buff. He is annoyed. We could say this annoyed buff. When he has this annoyed buff in place... Shackles will not work. He will uh, rip it. He will rip it apart as soon as he gets caught. The goal of this raid is make sure you kind of let the stagger go by doing DPS because he's standing still, and then you do the destruction at the very end because you're mixing the because uh, you're mi you're kind of mixing the ninety bar mechanic in between it so that you can only destroy him once and then you phase right away to the next phase. That's the easiest way to do it, and this is what it's called. Uh, stagger, stagger, right? We did stagger, stagger, and stagger. We did counter, and then f mechanic, and then stagger, stagger, and then destruction. And that is enough time for you to push to 30 bars. Uh, that's So that's the scripted battle that most people are going to do. To give additional clarity, this is an image that the chat has shared. Low DPS in Prague. So this is the shackle very beginning you throw. You stagger, and then you stagger the second, and then you fail the third, right? You're supposed to fail the third. And when you fail the third, it's usually 8 minutes to 30 second mark. And then he will always do a roundup counter where he kind of turns his tail, and then, he will, um, and then he will do a counter afterwards. So since you guys will assume a counter is coming very soon, you will land that most of the time. If you don't, well... Uh, you can always try to f throw two shackles to kind of like land it in. Counter, you stagger him and then you throw the shackle again, right? Over here. Uh, you are going to do either the double, you, you got to do the double stagger again for the second shackle or you are going to face. You're kind of extending the stagger mech and the counter mech, etc. So that you can trick she and parse him. That's like the whole idea of this combination of uh, strategies to do with the shackles, right? So this is also a good example here. Uh, he's shackled, right? And then we just finished the second stagger. And he's at 112, 113 bars. Because when the blood kind of goes in, uh, he heals HP a, a little bit. So he got at 109. And since this is a fast pushing team. So he throws it the shackles at any time. It activates the second shackle. It activates the destruction mechanic. You destroy his armors. And you're done. Like, uh, he won't reach five stacks 
until the phase uh, until the phase is over until 30 bars when he phases here right he's at 30 lines he's going to crawl up and then all you need to do is just stay in the center and then the next phase will start with the mini game so when you keep shackling and then push to 30 bars uh he will always throw the shackle like he will always bite the shackles off and then he will face, right? So this is when he face again in the middle. So you go to the center and he's going to start a mini game. Uh, the mini game is very simple. If if you guys stand wherever, just click once actually. If you, uh, if you actually try to click multiple times, it goes out. So you just click once. That's how I usually do it. I just click once. And then when he's getting the attack ready, if he's looking at left, he's going to start the breath from the left side, right? If he start from the right, he starts the breath from the right side. So you usually go this way. And the reason why we go this way here early on is someone found out that this, that the ring, the stage is circle, correct? The stage is circle and the breath is like a cone shaped. So you actually have a safe spot. So you don't have to wait until the breath passes. So what we do is we go we go to the edge like that. And since the breath is cone shaped, you have a safe spot around here. So you have an advantage. You have an advantage of starting early. So you will never have to be too late here. So you see this bard? You go to the edge and then you have a much shorter distance to access uh, to the dragon, right? Because after the first breath, he starts another breath from the other side. So if you're a support, right? Uh, you don't don't feel don't feel bad staying a little bit behind and then uh, cleanse your teammates if they get caught. So you space bar in, you stagger, and when you stagger, uh, you can't use battle items or anything. Make sure you walk away, <clears throat> and it's a gear shaped. Okay, so to figure out where the safe spots are based on his head, it's always the diagonals uh, from his from his head stop. So like, don't run straight back. Always kind of run here, and then the initial explosion will happen, and then you'll never die. This explosion actually is a is a is a death explosion. It's a it's a, it's a death damage for on item level players. So if you succeed the stagger here, uh, it is actually not as hard as you think. Uh, and then when that when that happens, there's a cheese where if you stand in the front in the middle, spam your shackle key, which is number two for me. You spam. You see me trying to press it here. If you spam it, before the camera turns away, you will throw one shackle here like this. You know how we all did it, right? Three shackles here. This will always land because you, need, you see him dashing and you see him dashing back. This timing is exactly correct. So this is the chief spot that you guys should know. So after it's going to be destruction mechanic. And if you do the destruction mechanic, he's going to be very weak for the rest of the fight. Now, if I explain uh, this particular fight here, if you are aggroed, he's going to be looking at you. If the more time passes, this times three is going to increase. And the more it increases, you take more damage, but you will do more damage too. Make sure you kind of stay around the diagonals and the sides. Um, yeah, the entropy players will have a, probably a, a lot of hard time on this. But if you fight enough, um, they'll be good. And as for support players, make sure you shield them properly and you save awakenings at this phase. Because when this stack goes up to like 10, 15-ish, what happens is it's very dangerous. You can, you can die in one hit. And uh, as, far as, I, as far as I know, you guys see me die all the time here too sometimes, right? That's because you make one mistake and then uh, and once one of these scratches or one of these explosions... Is going to do big damage on you, uh, when especially when he has a lot of stacks. So I think this covers gate two, and we talk a long time. The original video is going to be longer, but I think we can cut this up.